everyone, welcome back to N Academy. This is Deepak Krishna VM, ME Structural Engineering AMI, a verified educator. So yet another day, yet another topic on the artificial aggregate of lightweight concrete. So let's see how formed blast furnace slag fits into this category. So before that, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the N Academy and also follow us to the other platforms like Facebook app and the website. So let's begin. Hello everyone, good to see you. Hope you're having a good time. So previously we have discussed some of the important natural as well as important artificial aggregates of the lightweight concrete. Okay, but today also we are going to see another very important artificial aggregate of the lightweight concrete, the formed blast furnace slag. Okay, but before that we'll have a quick recap of the basics. Okay, so as we all know aggregates play a vital role in the concrete mix. Okay, it provides the structural stability, it provides the volume to the mix, it provides the strength and also it gives a, uh, gives a good finish or good dimensional stability to the concrete. Okay, so the same, uh, all, all these uh, what can we say, important properties are also followed by the lightweight aggregates in the lightweight concrete also. Okay, so the aggregates which weigh less than 1000 kg per meter cube are considered as the lightweight aggregates. Okay, so these are the aggregates that are qualified for the lightweight concrete. Why this lightweight? So if you zoom into the microstructure, we can see that they are highly porous microstructure. Okay, even though they are highly porous, they have enough strength to be act as an aggregate in a concrete environment. Alright, so generally it can be uh, divided into or classified into two that is natural and artificial we have discussed about natural in the previous lessons and now we are going we are still discussing about the artificial lightweight aggregates okay so in natural aggregates most of them are volcanic derivative okay so in some places uh, there is a lot of uh, there is a lack of availability of the natural aggregates okay uh, and also in such place and also in, in such environmental conditions like very snowy regions very much high desert uh, desert regions these aggregates are quite unavailable okay and also they are too expensive so in and sometimes they can be quite non uniform in their performance so to tackle all these problems the artificial aggregates were introduced okay now let's see the formed blast furnace slag all right so as we all know it's from the name itself it is something it has some relation with with the blast furnace slag and also it has some relation with the blast furnace okay so let's see what it is all about so first and foremost uh, so as we uh, so it is another important artificial aggregate okay lightweight artificial aggregate so this is made by quenching the blast furnace slag all right so this is not even the blast furnace slag this is a derivative of the blast furnace slag it is formed by cooling down or quenching of the blast furnace slag okay so let's see what blast furnace slag is all about first and foremost just to make sure we have the strong basics so so what is blast furnace slag so this is a byproduct okay that that is formed the, during the manufacture of pig iron in the blast furnace all right so these are a kind of waste material that is formed in the blast furnace so how it is formed so a blast furnace is a place where the, the temperature will be too high that means that 1400 degrees celsius to 1600 degrees celsius so in this play in this condition the silica and alumina a constituents combined fuse together to form a mixture okay so this mixture is quenched and it is allowed to cool down slowly okay so this uh, byproduct the or the soap product so formed is known as the air cooled slag okay so we have uh, two types of method for cooling or quenching first one by is by using the excess water okay so when the slag is formed and we quenched it by using the excess water so hence the products of form will be so granular in shape or in texture in structure okay so these are used in the uh, blast furnace cement blast, blast furnace slag cement used in the manufacture of blast furnace slag cement the next one is the right the opposite that is the usage of limited water okay so the limited amount of water is used which produced a porous honeycombed material which are glassy okay which resembles a pumic all right but there is another method uh, we follow so which how it is that the, when the, the molten slag are not uh, quickly cooled or they're not they're not cooled so slowly what they do is that uh, these molten slag are repeatedly agitated okay so after this 
uh, it is cooled it is quenched by using a very limited amount of water okay by this the steam will be produced from the molten slag okay but this steam is not allowed to escape okay what they would do is that they would try and trap this steam in the molten mass itself all right so what what will happen is that the internal expansion will takes place okay which means that there is a huge volume increase in the slag okay so this is known as the formed slag or expanded slag all right now let's move on to the size and bulk density relationship so if the size is 12 to 20 mm the bulk density will be 300 kg per meter cube 3 to 12 500 kg per meter cube less than 3 which is in the dust form which will be 700 kg per meter cube okay it's all because of the surface area one of the reasons all right now let's move on to the other points or the important points of the formed blast furnace slag so the materials so formed after the agitation after the limited water application and the entrapment of steam and expansion the chemical content or the chemical composition will be almost similar to the original molten slag itself molten slag itself but the sulfur content will be higher okay it has a similar uh, chemical comp composition similar to the molten slag itself but with a higher uh, sulfate content in it all right now we have the chemical composition let's let's now let's go for a bit more physical details that means that the structure and the texture and the strength okay will generally depends upon the chemical composition and the method of production okay so both of these have direct influence on the texture and the strength of the uh, formed blast furnace slag aggregate all right now we have we have heard a lot of a blast furnace slag and formed blast furnace slag now let's see how it is applied okay how, how it is significant to the concrete so the formed blast furnace slag what it do is that it contributes to the strength of the lightweight concrete all right so what happens is that uh, when uh, the formed blast furnace slag is combined with lime or when it is combined with the portland cement it exhibits the hydro hydraulic nature okay and also it acts as a mineral admixture and also exhibits some of the pozzolanic characteristics okay so by by doing combining all these uh, properties or all these behavioral changes it improve, improves the strength of the concrete all right so just like in the uh, clinker kiln or the formation of the clinker so the the FB, F, F, fbfs or the foam blast furnace slag will act hydraulic and, and act, it, pro, it uh, exhibits a bit of uh, pozzolanic properties and also it acts as a mineral admixture so combining all these properties it improves the strength of the lightweight concrete or the concrete so formed okay so that's how it, it contributes to the strength of the concrete now uh, let's see so the general structure or the general physical structure or the microstructure is almost similar to the pumic itself okay so some of the important must have qualities for the uh, formed blast furnace lag are it should be free from volatile impurities such as coke or excess coal okay so what happened will that if there is coke or excess coal the the either the burning process will be too much okay it will go just beyond the required limit or there will be a lot of unburned coal or coke present inside the furnace which is a heavy impurity which is very much difficult to remove okay and also get sep uh, to separate from the molten slag also all right the, the, it will be something like a um, physical granular things so it will it will really contaminate the slag so formed okay and also it should be free from any other excess sulfate because already the chemical composition the sulf sulfate is a, a bit higher so it doesn't require any other excess sulfate again okay and also it should be free from contamination due to heavy impurities okay any other foreign mixtures or any other foreign object should not be present inside the molten slag it will affect its properties in a very high rate all right now let's see some of the applications along with some advantages okay so <clears throat> first and foremost as i said before it contributes a lot to the strength of the concrete so something that contributes to the strength of the concrete definitely it will be applied in the structural behavior of the concrete or it will be applied in the elements of the concrete so as we all know the density uh, even though the weight is less if it's more denser uh, the properties can be altered a little bit okay so i mean the usage can be altered a little bit of the concrete element 
okay so by controlling the density this can be used in the load bearing walls okay so by con again controlling density it can be also used in the production of structural lightweight concrete which is the strongest lightweight concrete used for the uh, structural elements in a building or in any kind of structure all right uh, these are also again used in the concrete building blocks okay again due to the pro uh, property of contribution towards the strength and also providing a good packing uh, efficiency it's it also used in the concrete building blocks all right so, and also it ha uh, this has also good insulation properties okay so this is used for the insulation of concrete roof screeds and also very large reinforcements all right it is a very good thermal insulator and also uh, a, a bit of sound insulator but more than that it's a good thermal insulator okay so that's why it is used in the large reinforcements okay and also in small units there where we need concrete but doesn't require so much other self weight all right so, such as in places where windows and door frames we uh, the it uh, it requires the concrete in a good amount but the concrete self weight should not be much higher okay which will affect the entire structure and entire load of the building so in such cases uh, this kind of concrete this kind of li uh, structural lightweight concrete or the lightweight aggregate used concrete plays a very vital role so hence it is used in such kind of units all right so thank you once again i wish you a great day please comment your suggestions please rate my presentation please rec recommend and share the slides uh, this is my profile to the academy platform paste this in your browser so you can see the works and the other courses that i put forward in the in my profile in the academy platform okay so thank you once again i wish you a great day until next time see ya